So, good day. Sorry for the inconvenience. We had a last minute technical issue to deal with. So, but it gave us more time to wait for our members of the audience to appear. Let me begin right away by introducing this day's uh, agenda. So, to open, we must first recall that we are now gathered on the unceded territory of the uh, Kanatesatian nation, which served as a locus of exchange between First Nations. With this in mind, we have to remind ourselves that the autochthonous women are the uh, mm, criminalized group that are overrepresented in federal penitentiaries, yet only representing uh, an, a minute amount of the percentage. But they represent 44% of the inmate population at the federal level. In the provincial in Quebec, uh, indigenous women represent 10% of the population, and 60% of them are Inuit. So we ask to sincerely reflect on how to decolonize practices within the justice system so as to put an end to practices reminiscent of um, boarding houses. I would like to thank you all. I am Anne-Céline Genevois. I'm the coordinator of the Collective Entre Elles and will be your moderator for the day and have the pleasure to introduce and to see that we abide by the uh, um, the agenda, we don't. Have, we only have one round table for the morning. But let's begin with a few house tips. First of all, the COVID directives. You can move about, but you keep your mask on as you move about. Or, when, or during the vernissage, if one is up, you keep your, one keeps his mask, and uh, when seated, you can remove him. There is a simultaneous translation services that is afforded to you free of charge, even if you're bilingual. But just make sure any lost receiver will be billed $350. So be cautious when going to the washroom to be careful with these devices. Also, when going out to lunch, you should hand back the receivers you will be given back your identity card. And now the conference is being recorded. If you do not want your question to appear, but when you ask your questions, you will ask it to be deleted if you do not wish so. This, this uh, conference was limited to 50 um, in the audi as audience numbers, we had decided to leave space for uh, an outside audience, but rather to create something that would be conducive to dialogue. I wanted to add that we perhaps make it our intention collectively to be uh, benevolent and to respect one another and to remain solidary and be open and receptive to the needs of the others. Now, sorry, I have to use the other end to turn the page. So, in, with this spirit of benevolence, we will deal with uh, difficult topic that might that might um, 
evince some em emotions. And if you feel you need to retire, there is a safe space over there. Or we also have a volunteer which may discuss with you. Her name is Lydia. She's a social worker. You could also also go outside or and come back whenever you feel. So I will not read out the program to you, but just mention that uh, the, the panelists will be invited to join us. So there will be a short introduction with uh, an audio track, and then the panelists will begin the discussion. And every discussion will be followed by a question period about a 20 minutes long, and we will break uh, for lunch around uh, noonish, and then we'll get back at 1 p.m. But at 1.30 sharp, we resume. There will be also another short break around 3 p.m., and we should be over by 4.30. There will be two round tables in the afternoon. We are to conclude. Must, one mustn't forget to, to thank the partners for this day, the Collective Montréal and the Fond de Solidaire du Vieux Montréal. And we wanted to organize um, a panel and uh, re repeat what we had to say. I would like to thank the Caisse d'Economie Solidaire, as well as our partners, the Association Canadienne, Elizabeth Fry, and the Elizabeth Fry Society of Quebec. I will now invite the panelists who will address the issues. And so Catherine Chenet, professor at the School of Social Work of the UQAM, and a member of CASIF, which is the Coalition d'Action et de Surveillance sur l'Incarcération des Femmes au Québec, as well as Louise Henry, also a member of CASIF, and who has experienced uh, incarceration and is also an author. Before beginning, we will hear a short audio excerpt, and then we will reprise our conversation. Hello. I would like to share this with you. I would like to tell the people in charge of justice that I would like it that one day that person undergo the treatment we went through and the the infrastructures are filthy, the conditions in the buses. <coughs> it's not because someone has committed a crime that one person deserves this. It only exasperates the feeling of injustice. It justifies atrocities. The authorities seem aloof when it comes to incarcerated women. And one must get rid of the idea that a woman cannot commit a, 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 a misdemeanor. I mean, any human being is uh, liable to do that. It's up to us to learn from our mistakes, but this could happen to anyone, anybody, one of you. There are no two categories of people. There are only human beings, so I would like to thank you for you. hearing me out. Thank you very much, and for the invitation. I'll begin. Luis and I asked ourselves what we wanted to bring up to you and what we wanted to reflect upon. So I will ask Luis the first question, and then we will think 
of uh, of uh, advocating the outside the prison walls, uh, speaking out as a tool to denounce oppressions. You know, criminalized women who were judicialized are already speaking out. So one can hear them in fiction, where. Now, like, or oranges is new black. Oranges is new black. So we are addressing the issue of criminalized wi women in some other spaces. Some could speak out. I'm thinking here of the Vienna Commission and the Commission on Missing uh, Indigenous Women. Many Inuit women have uh, denounced their. Uh, conditions of detention, the violence and the racism to which they are subjected. Be it on the radio or in the written press, there were some um, speaking out by criminalized women from Leclerc. So as members of the CACIF, uh, uh, Catherine and I, we we addressed that issue as the uh, audio excerpt has shown. Women have uh, specific stories, but there are commonalities. There are times where we can hear stories of resistance or are take an artistic bent. So there are narratives in the public space by criminalized women. Unfortunately, even if it is present, they are not heard. One can come to that conclusion, as my colleague uh, addressed this, because the when we speak of epistemic injustice is deals with knowledge so criminalized women are not heard because they are not considered as legitimate advocates as if they but also because we're in a society where we have a hard time to hear them and make make sense of what they say the reason i'm here today is but my colleague we have a research project on the uh, speaking out of criminalized women and these last years we wanted to see how uh, women speak out in the public space where in what venue and so on and as for women and uh, jail looking at the written media, television, and documentaries. We uh, found 90 narratives by women or, peop or people near to incarcerated women. Of those 90 uh, testimonies, some were made by the women themselves, and Louise, but out of the 53 who testified, 25% of them was not anonymous, but you would clearly identify who is sharing. But 28 other are, others are done anonymously. This shows that there are issues for uh, incarcerated women to speak out in public. And out of the 25 that, that testified anonymously, you often find the same people. No, but I, I didn't. No, I didn't make the 28 statements. I mean the 25. Yes, but. Some will speak up publicly. So the first question I would ask Louise is what are why are there so few to speak out and then can be identified as women who were uh, incarcerated? Well, the first reason is shame. We are so ashamed that we do not speak of it. Also, self-contempt, it uh, prevents us from testifying. I mean, to end up 
in a big house is not a nice thought, so we keep mum about it. Also, the judgment of our family members or the surrounding and society. There's a stigma to uh, a, a woman with a criminal record. I mean, a man might might be, you know, possible, but there is a taboo about a woman with a criminal record. If it weren't taboo, we would be able to talk about what we've experienced uh, inside, but we're afraid. The feeling also of not being accepted by our community. You know, for us women, it's more difficult. This acceptance is more difficult. So what we do is that we just shut ourselves in, we cry, we depress, and even end our days because it is such a burden. Incarcerated women are labeled as well. They are considered a problem women, bad girls, it's more than bad girl. I mean, bad boys goes for men. And we women are running after the bad b boys, but bad girls is, is no. Um, it is not well perceived at all. Off, is, bad girls are off limit. And when, we, and when we testify, we aren't believed, nor considered as credible. We could repeat the same facts or the same situations, the same issues as done by others, but we won't be believed. This, I tell you, we tell you, this is how it is. And many have stated it, but, but because it comes from a woman, it's not credible. During my incarceration, and also after, I began to record women's testimony and ask them, why didn't you speak out? Why don't you, you talk about being ashamed? And most of them would repeat the same thing. Uh, you know, since I'm going to be judged and not believed, I might as well uh, hush. A lot of women also suffer. Some women are incarcerated. And uh, often those are for misdemeanors, minor uh, infractions, which are because women as a uh, vital needs but they will they will steal in order to eat or to get drugs because they need it because they are um, users and uh, but since we don't talk and that we don't address a problem uh, we keep mum about it then we go back to prison, and the more you go to jail, the more the pattern repeats itself, and the graver the consequences. All of that because we didn't speak out at the beginning. Yeah, I'll back to you. I found that especially interesting. You speak about a prison. Now, for those who live difficult, under difficult conditions, we can think of a vicious circle. I mean, there's, but also we could add a psychiatric ward to that because a lot of uh, uh, criminalized women have to live with uh, mental health issues. And I would like to introduce your 
to use your depiction of incarcerated women. They are oh, indigenous women are overrepresented in this regard. It's particular the Inuit are particularly overrepresented at the provincial and and some also women from um, uh, living in considered conditions of poverty who are are undergoing several oppressions. For instance, uh, a poor woman having mental issues or who is handicapped and uh, who ends up or has a, a, a gender identity issues and will end up in a woman's uh, prison. When speaking of uh, speaking out, this will take different forms according to the person's experience. Among those we will hear, many cannot speak out either out of fear of reprisals and they cannot afford to talk about it. So there are some people whose experience is underreported. As for the testimonies, we got interested in not only who was testifying, but as to the message itself. In these last years, there are three recurring themes. You have heard a lot of those testimonies. What are the themes? The people who testify, they speak as uh, they speak about jail. It's not a place where things happen. It's impossible to have uh, uh, love relationships or intimacy. Everything is uh, hemmed in. The second theme addresses uh, emotions, uh, events from prison life, so sadness. To uh, also, the added uh, uh, sadness of having a member of the family uh, in jail. And also, a third theme are the inadequate uh, conditions. We don't hear all the voices, so with the t what you have heard, when women speak out against uh, the oppression, what are they denouncing? Most, most of them speak about the officers that is under, uh, is inadequate. And by their attitudes, it has a negative impact on the self-esteem of the women. Most of the people working um, most of the people working there are not qualified for a feminine uh, clientele because we are different in our way of being and our coping mechanisms. When we speak to our children on the phone, we cry. Men don't. Uh, you won't help. You, you know, it's not the same. And these women require support, and the staff is not adequate to that. They also have a hard time. The fact of being an, a correctional officer, you look at it. Yeah. They don't have the direct respect to women. They don't have it. It's not part of the job description. 
I'm not, it's not judgmental. That's uh, simply a state of fact. They are not there to help us. Their job is something else. But when we women are jailed, we need help as we get in, not 10 days later, not a month later, but the day, the very day we come in, or even at the um, All of Justice. Because something, a bulldozer is getting into our lives and uh, tearing down everything we knew. Of course, jail is a punishment, women lose their freedom, but for most of them, of having lost, it, having lost their freedom is something, but what I have to experience with the staff to make their lives unbearable. Women don't see an end to it. We're not even talking about the uh, inadequacies of the premises or uh, the change from one wing to another. All of this is endless when we are speaking about the inception. I'm, I hear a ringing. I, 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 it might even be my phone. I'm sorry about that. So people thought I would be stressed out. Well, I'm, I'm not. It's also especially important that women believe that they can change, but it's not with the type of behavior that could we can bring ourselves to change. I mean, you go to jail and then everything goes downward from there on. We don't have any, any more strength to, 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 to pick ourselves up. I've seen if you hit someone, let's say an, an, an old man, if you, if you beat up an old man to get money, we're all the same. We live it all the same. But we need the tools to be able to cope with it. But we do not have those tools. We have to believe in ourselves when we say, I, what is, and uh, you have to know why. You see, okay, there might be some stuff. We, there's a therapist and uh, a psychologist, but no, they're, they're not there. It might be, but there are limits. It might be a social worker, but that's it. So a woman requires positive uh, support to get out of it, a network around her to help her get out of the vicious circle, because the fact of not being uh, believed or being considered a um, a, reje a society's reject and to have your liberty restricted also the way we feel. This is, you know, we're being treated the way we, 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 we uh, feel ourselves to be. The last item, is I will read you an investigation report of the coroners who uh, was the seat over there and his mother was uh, declared by natural causes to show you that the word of a jailed woman is totally ignored. And the first line you can read in this report is the following. The report was for the families, the news, and the uh, organization for the protection of human life.
It, it's what the, the report was directed to. So the woman is 60 year old with reduced mobility and must use uh, stroller for long distances. According to the assessment of her uh, uh, therapeutist, she is being followed for her diabetes and has to move four times a day to the prison infirmary for the treatment. That lady has an appointment at the Cité de la Santé, a hospital with her physician after after seen her physician, she's brought back to the detention center during transportation. The lady does not fall, nor com does she complain of any um, of anything. But around 9 p.m., she complains of having hurt her knee on her way back from the hospital, and she has a hard time to move about. The officers inform the nurses uh, a nurse had asked that the lady uh, move by herself. Finally, exceptionally, a nurse goes to see the lady in her cell. She is evaluated by her, who notices nothing peculiar about her health. It is thus recommended to transfer her in the isolation wing, I mean, in the, in the hole where she will have a better medical follow-up if she cannot move by herself. It's, it's solitary because it's the only sector where nurses will move about. The lady is reluctant to change her wing and she declared that the next day she would be apt to go to the uh, uh, health system. The following day at 7.30, she mentioned being in pain and being unable to get out of bed. There is urine in her uh, sheets. Uh, a guard notifies the nurse of this, and the nurse says that, that the uh, a detainee must go herself to the health center to get her treatment. Uh, she refuses to do so. She's there, thus tra transferred to solitary confinement once again. Next day, a nurse uh, go, goes to see the woman and was being informed that she will get back to her former uh, wing. She asks at least to have a wheelchair to get back to her sector. This was denied her. Around 1.45 p.m., she gets back to her J cell in e sector EF with her Walker, even if she says she's unable to do it, and during the whole, the whole, she she complains the whole way, and once in her cell, she starts screaming that she can no longer move. She slips to the ground and lies on the floor. An emergency call is launched, and she no longer responds to her name. The health staff will take vital signs that are normal. Um, blood pressure, um, blood, and uh, and the nurse says that the lady is uh, just uh, um, uh, now the ends of her limbs are cold, which is well known among with its. Uh, this uh, inmate, she no longer responds to simple orders, and she seems to bleed. There is no sound issuing from the mouth. A male nurse proposed to position her on the side, but the other members of the staff was simply to put her on her couch. A nurse would have said she's blocking her breathing to change her vital side so as not to get back to KL 
so as not to have to go herself to the health, to the infirmary. She is found uh, unconscious around on her couch around uh, 3.25. She is transferred to Cité de Laval Hospital. Her death is uh, recorded at 4.30, died from a digestive hemorrhage provoked by gastropathy. Arteriosclerotic important. Seulement trois heures avant, on avait ignoré sa parole. And then we hadn't believed her when she spoke and asked for help. So how far should we need to get an imprisoned woman uh, or criminalized has as much importance as any other woman, even a nurse. I hope with all my heart that women will start to denounce and speak to be heard. Thank you. Thank you, Louise for having read this report, which is very poignant. So I ask uh, you, people, and the public, so when we're talking about testimonies, there were several of them. Louise has spoken about obstacles to uh, s women speaking out, both inside the jail and outside the uh, prison. So this doesn't happen by itself. The person speaking, she, it, it, she is speaking to someone. She is speaking to a community. To uh, so this morning, as a community, as a society, how do we receive uh, uh, women's uh, uh, speaking out? You have this interest, you're listening, but how do you listen and then act after you hear women? How to understand, go further, denounce, support women who are speaking? So here's the question that we want to ask you. Nobody has anything to say, yeah, okay. Thank you very much for your testimony. I am uh, one of the girls who speaks, probably. Uh, welcome to the group. So I feel that it is important to spread the word, she says. So women, non-binary people, transgenders, people with two spirits, don't have, uh, are not given the right to speak, whether it's federal or provincial. These people are, are isolated to avoid, the, uh, the, to prevent the, uh, this information from being, but when you're gonna leave, you're gonna talk around the table to your friends and your families. Uh, I won't say, it's like the telephone. It's uh, so it just needs to start. Even for me, it hasn't been easy. I w I uh, own up. I have a 36-year-old son because naturally my phone number is in the prisons, and the girls call me if they need anything. If I can help them, my son, mom, why are you helping them? You. Do your thing, even for him, even for my own son. It's a taboo moment for the for his mother to be out there helping 
these criminals. It's not a self-evident thing, but if we do not speak out and if we don't rally, we won't get anything to support this process. So we have to go beyond this. Maybe I won't be loved. People don't love me because I have denounced things. I believe it. things are like this and like that. What I'm denouncing is what I've seen, is what I've experienced personally, and must change. So uh, I was threatened, but I've, I was uh, given. My book is practically done. It's coming out in April, yes. So it's the denunciation of uh, that all, all that all of you would have uh, been able to make, that everything that you have said, that you've experienced, and it's not self-evident, and we're not talking about 10,000 women, and that's the difficult thing, and that's our uh, Achilles heel. There's not enough of us. If there were as many of us as men, we're a small group of women uh, criminalized, and it's difficult to be heard. So even if I say I'm telling you that it's true, and others say, oh, come on, so you practically need an investigation report and you have uh, media uh, moments uh, to be believed. It's not appropriate. What about my psychological wounds? We have to speak out, and I agree with you, and I wanted to say, so one of the reasons why people don't speak, I was a victim of things, and people who were victims of this and the people who are freed are also victims of this, you're not allowed to speak unless the correctional services allow you to do it, and you have to tell us what you're going to speak about. If I don't like it and you do it anyway, you'll be sent back in, and you need a permit only if you're speaking in the name of the uh, correctional services. So the provincially also, the chart of rights and uh, human rights, your right to expression is exists. So uh, unless you're speaking in the name of the correctional services, women don't know this. People who are incarcerated in these various establishments for women don't want to go back in and don't so they don't want to rock the boat though they don't know their rights and they refuse to speak essentially and it's the same thing is true in, at the federal level and in the provincial to return into incarceration because a vicious circle if you break your conditions and a woman who is who loves too much, who is effective dependent, who is inside. The judge says that she is not allowed to see her boyfriend because it'll be a, a cause of battle and it won't take two days. She'll return to her, to this person, and because it's her effective dependence and to be destabilized. I have no really did you didn't break your conditions you're destabilized I believe you're at risk and that's it and the more we speak about it the more you can structure it the better it'll be and as we get organized we have to start somewhere but to uh, for joining together we denounce and we want to speak I don't want to denounce it's big it, that's not the only reason that you want to I just want to say what hurt me I want to empty that topic if we want to move ahead then we have to speak out otherwise you won't ever be able to progress you need help it's a huge wheel that we need to start up and the correctional agents don't help us the judge and the lawyers don't help us either and we have to uh, raise the awareness of this to to show them how they could help us to express our needs it's not to denounce and start a war that wouldn't go very far but 
Is there anything else? Yes, there's a question here. So, hi. Well, uh, uh, these were just thoughts. I'm a street worker in Montreal. I work for a community organization to answer your question, how to listen to people who are speaking out and to give, to, to support them, support their actions and the, their words and with concretely, concrete support. So certain things can be decriminalized People are in a man's prison because they weren't able to make their change. They're because they're in a precarious conditions. These are these are very uh, uh, sensitive situations. How to criminalize people who are experiencing traumatic experiences, and so it really concerns me, and it's very interesting what you said, and I have thoughts about uh, maybe I believe that we uh, centralizing women, uh, and I see them more, uh, people who are criminalized, whether it's women, ordinary people, the system does not address these concerns and the society, our way of welcoming uh, ex-prisoners, uh, uh, how many young people that I'm working with who can't find work, can't find housing, it's the vicious circle uh, because they have a record. So it's a, it's a, a vicious circle. Once you have a so, so you have a record, uh, so for buildings, uh, credits, uh, uh, research, and then they find a plumative for their uh, criminal record. How many women I've seen stop their work because they have a criminal record, but um, what I find uh, all right then is it, we have to, at the start, really f get the most information to be able to sit down to determine clearly what we want. I'm talking just for women because, <laughs> well, I mean, that's, I'm a woman. But anyway, they, when they hear it and what kind of derelict conditions we're experiencing, now uh, we are not believed. Uh, we are thrown into a place that is, makes no sense. And so uh, more than just working about correcting these things, we're not believed. So we're constantly in the same vicious circle. Uh, so we have to do certain things first that will allow us to be heard and believed and to, to break out of that. And I, I fully agree with you on that. <clears throat> so these are my thoughts about, we hear a lot about uh, social reins uh, of people who were uh, criminalized. It depends so much more about so many things. Certain young people can't have a bank account because they're criminalized, so they ha can't have a credit uh, rating and uh, can't have an apartment, and they have uh, jobs under the counter. So we're constantly chasing our own tails to get any cards, and so nobody has a debit card because they haven't got an account. Uh, so if they want to open an account, you'll have to wait before you get your debit card. It's like to getting <coughs> for it's uh, like getting a, a social insurance check. It's a big thing. I didn't believe that at first. To what extent? So, and I'm on the first line, and you're on the first line. I would have been very happy as street worker. You're right in the 
heart of the action, you know what people need and you're looking at it. These are affective, <clears throat> lack of affection and drugs. So it's, it's inconceivable, this. And so maybe I can add as well. So I, I noticed that something that was named of women and the gender. And we always have this difficult to speak. I, I'm always thinking about this. We're talking about a prison for women. The institution is very gender oriented. So the only job is is in the uh, uh, washing department. Uh, so there are other jobs that are accessible to the men, and women can only work in the uh, laundry. So you hear about women, about women. The prison gives a precise uh, image of what kind of women are in prison. And when you check it out, we see there's all kinds of gender expressions. There are sexual minorities, but that's totally uh, overlooked. And the presence of uh, native women, we've spoken about it, but it's a difficulty denouncing the reality for women's prison. So it affects a, a small number of prisons in Quebec, but to speak about inclusive words, to get a, a, a voice as a multiplicity, not in competition, but in alliance. First element, and I'd like to remind everybody, trans women who are provin in provincial prisons, the provincial correctional services don't have any policy with the trans uh, incarceration of trans people. So it's been three years now. I'm, I've three years. I've asked access to information. Is there a policy for the ministry to uh, regarding the carceral uh, uh, handling of these people? Uh, nothing has been written so far. After three years, I first asked this question. People representing the trans think there's also this element. It's a gender prison, but the institution itself is not trying to think ahead to see how they can respect the rights of trans people, non-binary and everybody else. That is true. I wanted to add this. This follows, follows all our life, uh, how the very finish. We have to be conscious that the punishment is long. As we said before, the punishment is long. To start working, to find an apartment, to have an insurance. Me, I have uh, friends that uh, that uh, friend have told them, uh, hey, you will not talk to Luis. Uh, Luis, Luis just came out of jail. Everybody has uh, uh, is allowed to make mistakes. I, I will not define myself by my acts. I will actually say that this is the best thing that it happened to me. I will do it again, even though if I wanted it to cut off my life a couple of times to become what I have become today, I, I will do it again. But I know that it will follow me all my life. And all the girls uh, concerned, they, they know it. They will, will judge, uh, catalogate it, not trust it because we're not more trusted when, when, when we come out. And it's the function, the way it functions, the agents function. The surveillance agents, and there are many actually, they are not formed to help us psychologically, mentally, emotionally. The work is actually to say, hey, Henry, you're going to jail, I'm going to watch you. Their job is not like the travail social, it's not like the social workers, it's not the, the, the home of transitions. Uh, I, was prom I promised myself to not work. The mission of transmission, they, they, they're just being thrown now. It doesn't make sense. They still all uh, messed up. They haven't verbalized, they haven't understand 
they will come back to prison. It takes them a lapse of time to decompress, to, 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 to stabilize themselves. It's been four, three, six months that I haven't come out. I have to go see this. I have to pay this. Uh, there's, it's, it's, it doesn't make sense. Those are little things that nobody actually guides you through. I have stayed in, in, in prison for many years, and I just have money now, and I'm just going to go spend it. But if we, but if we talk, if we verbalize it, something will happen. But effectively, the agents are there to watch us. Me, I have to go. I have to go back. Even in January, when I came out of prison, I was high like this. But I have to. But I have to pay my things. I have to go to uh, the police every 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 month. But look, I'm I'm working here. I'm I'm doing what you told me. But but they 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 they. they they have three years of surveillance. They 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 they're gonna be surveil. They're gonna be on top of me for three years. So, but we need help. We have to denounce them. We have we have we have to. We have to come say what we need. If I ask you, uh, anybody here, how does it work uh, at the? In jail, how does it work? Nobody knows. I'm Mia, the one who knows. Me, I know. Right, where can we can we sit down and we can maybe work out this together? Sorry, I'm a little passionate about. Me, I, I like to say something of what you say. I work with Apex. Actually, we work with uh, employment. Maybe it can help uh, also the girl uh, the. The social worker on the other side. I don't know if you know. Me, I think, may I think there's many resources. It's just that uh, it's missing a little visibility. It's true. Us, we work. Uh, uh, we work uh, with uh, employment. If she needs a uh, apartment. Uh, if she needs apartment, a supervised apartment, we, we, we can help through all of that. There's many interesting things. Uh, the Dress for Success is a program that uh, that uh, helps girls to uh, to 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 get uh, included in the community. They are they are they are accompanied with uh, benevolence. There's many things that exist, but uh, from the point of view psychologically, there's there's nothing. Uh, I, when I came out, I have to go myself uh, to the CLS. Uh, before before I came out, I was uh, I was on um, caution, but it was me who actually uh, went to CLS. I mean, nobody, nobody told me that it was really tough that I was just leaving because there's, there's people that got hanged, there's people that got uh, suicided, uh, there's others that got uh, auto-mutilated. I have seen so many things. So psychologically, uh, we need help. We know Apex. We, we 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 talk about uh, we talk about it. Uh, you guys, Apex. We have we have two uh, sources at Leclerc, but it's at level of what we have lived. Uh, the 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 strong things that we have lived. Those are the things that we. Because ours girls, this is the way we we are. You know, maybe the guys is different. But uh, but uh, but I don't think so because the guys uh, that they, they wouldn't they, they actually they, they, the prison was transferred for the girls. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. I couldn't. 
So this is girls that need just with the kids to cut off the, the connection. When you come in at the COVID time, they, they give you $10, $10 after 15 days. We, we need that. We need to talk. When we come into the jail, we need to talk with the mother about the kids, with our boyfriend about the situation. But it's 15 days after they give you $10. And that's in just and, and if we don't talk about this, it's 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 no one knows. If we are light and we tell what's going on, this doesn't work. This doesn't work. Again, we're going to repeat it, and 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 then we cannot just give up. I'm sorry, it's me again. Uh, for, for experience, there's something that uh, that that works well because we do it. We put pressure on the agents of liberations uh, with the strength of uh, our commentaries. It can maybe make a difference. The way they they function, the agents of liberations. Uh, those that work with the organism, it's a taboo of the woman in jail. When they talk to us, it's there where the problem is. They start judging us. It's a crying girl. It, it's, a, it's, it's a manipulator. It's a liar. You lie. It's, 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 that's the problem. That, that's actually the problem will not trust. Hello, Madame Henri. I'm, I'm curious to hear how can we break these taboos interior, inside of the, the walls? How can we uh, uh, help these women to speak out? Do you think there's a space where, even though there's not resources, there's no psychologues, there's no social workers. Is, the, is there's a hope? Yes, there's a hope. I, I have more than a hope. I have a, I have a bunch of problems all the time. So to, 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 to leave that, I know that uh, there's a hope. It's sure that we have to sit down uh, and, 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 and try to find out a neutral person. Also, an alcoholic will help an alcoholic. Also, the girls in jail, we hold on together. The feminine solidarity inside is very strong. So it needs another girl who's been in jail in order to... Yes, the intervenience they can help, uh, like the Iselivzavet uh, Fry uh, Association, but, but we need but we need someone who has been in jail so she understands what the girl inside needs or it's living, and from there take the solutions. Uh, by the way, I can tell that uh, a girl cannot come out of the club right away. It's not possible. It's, it has to be one month before and one month later at Teres Gandre. At Teres Gandre. Because she needs to centralize in herself. She doesn't need to go out and start spending her money. This is, this is, uh, this is all the same person. I know these persons, they, 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 they will come back because one year later they, 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 they come back. They have the same pattern. There's some of them that we cannot help. But once we know where, where, that where the problem is for this person, we can we can work it out. So we can start working on this, on that, on that before coming out. Maybe yes, I'm I'm confident, and I hope to see it by by my own eyes. He can who can believe you inside of the walls, inside of the walls, the girls, the girls. The girls, the girls, they know because they, they, they know I'm writing this, this, this book and it's coming out. 
and 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 the politicians are getting involved. They they come and see it. It starts to to to, to work. The girls themselves. Some of them they go like you know we'll never be able to change that, but I can. I, but I cannot see who, who can who can help me inside. I have uh, some problems with women inside, but I don't see myself calling inside in order to 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 save the citizens because that's what they do and it's not not worth and doesn't help anything. So, Lisa, I like to uh, add something. Who can who can trust the girls? So the protection of citizens has this mandate. The ombudsman, the ombudsman, yes, but at federal uh, level, uh, and then provincial level is uh, th those are first uh, resources. But uh, when the girls, uh, the prison of girls, from Tangue to Leclerc, there's many uh, groups that actually get involved. Le Centre de Laval, uh, the Commission of uh, uh, Actually, there was many organisms they, they wanted to see who were denunciating the, 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 the way the, uh, the jail was handled. The water was not clean. There was many denunciations. So we, we wanted to go inside of the prison talk to the agents, uh, see how the jail it works. This was a demand of uh, the League of uh, Liberty uh, uh, Rights. Uh, Alexandre Le Duc from Quebec Solidaire uh, asked uh, the Minister of Security, Public Security to go himself to the jail to survey what was happening, but he was refused. But we can we can actually ask ourselves what's going on with the girls, but actually we also have to ask ourselves what's going on in the jail, because and that doesn't depend only on the uh, with the girls in jail. That depends also in the jail itself. And then and the last thing, there's a with the COVID. There's there's many groups of surveillance that couldn't go into jail because of the the reasons that we know. So there's many groups that could not go to jail uh, and see what was going on to denounce it and to follow up. Hello, it's me again. So we ask a lot what we can do uh, inside, but I think it's my opinion. But I think it's actually to review our social basic to avoid a, a jail because the money that we spend on jail uh, it's it's a lot uh, in federal it's actually six six sixty thousand for a person in jail and sixty ten percent sixty three percent seventy percent actually goes uh, goes to the personal and their benefits, and the rest, it doesn't go anywhere. The world doesn't go. So this is what I know of federal uh, uh, jails. Look, look at the countries where the incarceration goes down. Nordic uh, countries, for example, for drugs, medications, incarceration itself. It's not even the self. They, they, they actually transform the jails. Their social base is, 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 is based on not jail, not going to jail, where actually the people can, can still work in, can, can still uh, have their apartment. So the problem is, can, can we can we take that money and, and put it in the social basics? So we 
do prevention or we put the money in the jail inside. I think prevention is it's it's important. The second thing that I would like to say all the services that we are talking about, ombudsman, etc. Uh, they all have they all have uh, the power of recommendation, but they cannot change anything. It's the provincial and the federal who 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 go like, oh, we read your report, and we we change things now. The, the, the federal court it doesn't doesn't have the power. I think there's we have to have a system with the power. Uh, yes, I'm down with you. I'm 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 very low in the in the in the stairs. I think uh, I think it's important to speak. Sorry, sorry. There's another question. I didn't want to interrupt you. But you can continue, actually, your your idea. So, yeah. So, it's the fact that we can actually talk. I'm actually looking for, for, for new members. I'm going to ask you all. I have... Uh, we need girls like you that, that that were even three months inside, but you were in, in federal in the province, in provincial. You can help us, uh, actually. You can help us to, 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 to work out this. But I'm the only one. The girls, they, know, they don't want to uh, add to, the, to my ideas. I have to actually. Uh, it's really, it's really nice to hear from you. I think, I think we trust you. <laughs> you guys are behind me. There's many things that I find very interesting, actually, in the conversation. Who works actually in intervention? I think the intervention was very interesting because we can imagine that uh, both of you are, 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 are contradicted uh, points. Like, uh, wait, uh, uh, there's you who's saying that there's not enough resources, and, and it's the same for, for my colleagues who are in jails. And there's another one saying, yes, there are services, maybe they are not showing enough. For a little while, me, I was like, uh, wait, who's saying the truth? Is there services or there's no services? And that's what the voice of the woman inside is telling us. And yeah, there's the ser services, but the needs of the girls inside, it's, it's, it's also important. So there's importance of the voice of the government inside, but there's also the importance of the services outside. But I think actually what we work at is the, the real problem on this is the astigmatization. Actually, actually the, there's, there's, there's something interesting on, on this. There's a concept of the, the astigmatization. I think uh, the antidote of the stigmatization is, is to be pride. And it's not, it's not, it's, it's hard for a woman that has lived this through, through all of this to be pride, to have, to have pride. In, 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 in the dialogue of, of women themselves. 
like uh, now I'm taking your words. But I think it's really the institution. I think it's it's clear for everybody here in the room. The girls like you, Louise, that take that uh, what talk about it. Actually, the, 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 what we're talking about, it's not your personal, uh, um, what you need. It's actually what the girls inside need. So what we need is to split what happens in my individual life and what happens in the other one. And this... Uh, And this is important. When I when I and I heard my voice on your voice, and this is denouncing things that are systematic, and this is what it's hard to to understand. And congratulations, really. Oh, thank you. I'll, I'll take them. Well, thank you, thank you, everybody. We're gonna conclude. Uh, this night on these beautiful words. Thank you very much.